All right, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the That Makes Sensei English podcast. My name is Dan, and I'm joined, as always, by my co-host and friend, Stu. How are you doing, mate? I'm wonderful, buddy. How are you doing? Yeah, not three bad, which is a bit better than two bad. So, <laughs> good news. Good news. <laughs> How's life your end? Yeah, great. Busy week. Um, just excited to get into the podcast. Let's see what we're going to talk about today. Got some great topic. Yeah. A, a great topic for today. <laughs> some don't, great topic. Don't give away behind the scenes. They don't know we're recording. <laughs> they don't know we're recording two episodes one after another. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I tried. Uh, I can cover it quick enough. Cats out the bag now. Never mind. Mm, um, definitely but, so. Yeah, I'm excited to talk about some of these topics. It's going to be this first one I'm pretty interested about. So let the people know, what are we talking about today, Stu? What's the topic for today? Today we are talking about tattoos. And basically the question that we're going to start off with is, what do you think about tattoos? Interesting topic, especially here in Japan. Um, exactly. Yeah. So this should be, be a good laugh. Like, for me, it's normal you know i've got tattoos i can't really you know be in a glass house throwing stones saying tattoos are bad when i've got my own tattoos and that so of course. for me it's it's normal i grew up with friends who are tattoo artists my my wife also got loads of tattoos used to be a tattoo artist so amazing for wow me, that's so cool it's just normal like i i think growing up more people i knew had tattoos than didn't have tattoos probably um, so that's kind of interesting, but how about yourself? So what is your like general opinion on tattoos? Do you have any tattoos? Um, well, you know, me and you are very, very similar in a lot of, a lot of ways. Like we have similarities for our past, I think, and, and mm. similar things that we like. Um, uh, but one thing I don't have is a tattoo mm. or a piercing. So I decided when I was young, cause you know, I grew up in a group, um, where I was, I was going to a lot of live concerts, you know, yeah. rock, ska, punk, music, and many people. N n all, I, it's rare to find someone without a tattoo in that kind or, of... Or a piercing or something. Yeah, or yeah. a piercing, yeah, exactly. A flash tube or something. Yeah. So it's it's an interesting um, situation. And I, yeah, for me, I, I decided I'm going to be the only person in the world in 20 years who doesn't have a piercing or a tattoo. So I will be unique. That was my idea yeah, when I was a kid. Like going against the grain in, you know, <laughs> against the, the people who are going against the grain, but going against that. You know? Yeah, 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 uh, definitely. That, that's I'm bucking the trend. Yeah, Let's put that's it that a good way. One. Bucking the trend. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. But I, but actually, I moved to Japan and realized that oh, I'm not so normal. I'm not so uh, unique, actually, because yeah, everyone yeah. here, not many people have tattoos here, that's for sure. Mm. You're, you're kind of going with the green again now. <laughs> mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. I went to the wrong place, obviously. Uh, well, all right place, depending on how you, you look at it. Um, yeah. Yeah, like, I also spent a lot of time in that scene, so to speak, of, you know, going to punk shows or metal shows or something, and... It does kind of feel like a, a pissing contest in a way with people mm. like who can look the most alternative, you know, um, and it does kind of feel like that sometimes. And I, as a young, younger guy, like when I was 16, 17, I didn't really have any piercings. I think I had an ear piercing and uh, wasn't that bothered about it. But then I got the first thing I did, I got my lip pierced. That was the first one. Um mm. And I was like 18 and I felt like the most badass, you know, like, oh, I look so cool. But actually, at first I thought I looked a bit shit, to be honest. Uh, but then I got my nose done when I was like 33. So quite a big mm -hmm. time difference between those two things. So just to clarify for anyone who doesn't know, because there's many people from around the world and I'm sure different places... Uh, due to cultural differences or maybe mm. even religious differences, may not know even know what a piercing is. So a piercing is where you have literally like your skin is pierced. Yeah, it pierced means to make a hole in something or to or to stab something. And it's where you have a hole, maybe a ring. No, mostly rings is the most common thing, but there's studs. Yeah, you there's many stud. vari variations you can get uh, mm. for piercings. And obviously tattoo is body art, essentially with ink. Mm. Mm. And like, I think commonly people know ear piercing 
Like that's yes. a, a common one where people but put a hole in it so you can wear earrings, jewelry. Et cetera, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but then, you know, over the last 15, 20 years, I guess it's kind of evolved more into like facial piercings and nowadays facial Not tattoos just... are a, a thing now. Mm, but piercings so, could be anywhere these days, yeah, oh, literally. Cer- and, yeah. They certainly can, mate. Um, but... I, I, obviously, there's some interesting ones, but the ones that I always found, like the ones that used to make me, you know, I don't know what grimace. the word is. Yeah, grimace, nice word. Yeah, 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 grimace. The word, the, the things that made me grimace the most were the ones like the back of the neck. Oh, or yeah. The, I've or seen the, one uh, on the and, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I always felt like, what, why? Why? The, what, the one like, that got me is like the bridge of the nose. That oh, looks yeah, painful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, yeah, yeah, that yeah. Looks so I understand. I guess it's like, I don't want to say addiction, but it's it's. I guess it's like you want to test where can you do it next kind of yeah. thing at some point. Yeah. I think for some people it is kind of that rush that you get from it and like, okay, what's next? What's the next thing? What's the big thing I can do next? You know, and I think in some ways it can be, especially with tattoos, a lot of people talk about kind of like an addiction to tattoos. Like, because if you've never had a tattoo, it, it looks very painful. And yeah, I'm, not, I'm not going to say that it's not painful. But it's not as painful as most people think. And in a way, it's kind of a strange phenomenon that is not painful. It's a little unpleasant, but it's kind of a strange thing. Like, um, I've got a few tattoos. My my tattoos are pretty stupid, if I'm honest. Like, um, I've got, on my leg, I've got a, a Rick Mail portrait. From. That's amazing. <laughs> oh, my God. Only so, if you know who it is. Like, you know, like my reaction is exactly what you want when you have a tattoo. Yeah. That's really incredible for me. Not even I love that. that. It's so stupid because there's an episode of Bottom where he paints yeah. himself for Eddie's present. Oh, so you've done and, a picture of a picture. I've got the picture of his shit self-portrait uh, on my leg. So, you know, like it's not very deep meaning or anything. <laughs> it's just one of my mates as a tattoo artist. Like, I want to do this. And I was like, yeah, let's do it. You know? Um, so a lot of people feel that tattoos are supposed to be this really deep, meaningful thing. And I guess for some people they are, but for me, it's just, I thought that were cool. Let's do it. <laughs> you know? uh, yeah. I, um, like I, some of them are so incredible. Like they mm, could be, like a piece of art to be for honest sure. with you, you know, for sure. they really could be. It's, it's some of the, some of the, the detail mm. that people put in and the coloring is just in- incredible, you know, and incredible, incredible. It? Yeah. Incredible. <laughs> That's nice right. pun for anybody interested in puns. There you go. Yeah. But I think, I think that, um, the worry always is for most people. I mean, when you're young, you don't think about it. But mm. as you get older, you realize as you age, your skin changes. Yeah, your body oh, changes. For sure. So, I'll show ha- you an exact example. Yeah, this, please. Uh, there you go. If I, you can see on the YouTube, uh, Dan's showing us. A, trying to show you a really shit uh, tattoo on my a arm. A star. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So this is now really blown out. The lines have got really thick because the tattoo artist wasn't very good, to be fair. Um, and yeah, it looks pretty shit. And, <laughs> and that's a, ta- that's something that's drawn on me forever that I'm like, oh, that's pretty shit. Hmm. So I didn't think about it. I was about 18 and just, I wanted to get a tattoo and I, I got this tattoo and I, I don't regret it, but I kind of think like, yeah, maybe I should cover that with something else, uh, because it does look a bit crap. Or laser Whereas, surgery or something. Uh, probably I just get it tattooed over because they do like cover up tattoos and yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I've got a huge tattoo on my shin um, of uh, like a, a Japanese Daruma and I got that in Japan and the artist is quite famous in Japan um, for doing these kind of tattoos. I'm not going to try and get my leg on the screen because you know it's, okay. it's going to be a disaster. Insert, pi- insert picture here. Yeah, Ooh. I'll put a picture yep. somewhere and that looks cool. That's like and that's actually got a meaning as well. It's a, a picture of what they call a Daruma doll. I don't know. Hmm. It's like a little red New doll. New Year's um, yeah. doll, yeah. And it's like, the idea like is that when you have a goal in life, you colour in one of its eyes. That's and right. when you've achieved the goal, you colour in the second one. So I hmm. got that on my leg. 
And yeah, many, sorry, I said New Year's, but many people buy them for New Year's, didn't they? Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. It's almost like a Japanese version of a New Year's resolution. Yeah, sort of. It's essence. that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. So I got that tattoo, and it's got quite a, a good meaning. But, you know, some people just like the art. Some people, there's a meaning. But one thing, and this is the most hypocritical thing you'll ever hear me say. Mm-hmm. I can't. I don't get it when Western people get Japanese or Chinese characters tattooed on them and they don't know what it is, right? And I say that's hypocritical because I've got a Japanese kanji tattoo on my leg. But, <laughs> but specifically, I've got something from Street Fighter. And I know exactly what it says. And I know exactly what it means. And I know exactly why I got it. But, you know, there's always somebody that's like, oh, look at my tattoo. It says lucky in Chinese. And it doesn't. It says something, something completely different, you know. So that's a bit of a strange one, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, it's but interesting. Let's, let's talk a little bit about what's the worst tattoo you've ever seen. Whether it's before online you, or in you... life. Before you drop onto that, I just want to... That's a great question as well. But before you drop onto that, I just want to bring up why did we mention earlier that being in Japan and having a tattoo is a strange thing? Oh, yeah. Well, you know, Japan's got a slightly different culture when it comes to tattoos. So, Stu, what does a tattoo represent in Japan? What do you think? I don't... Been, I mean, we're talking about... Long enough. Yeah, I, I know why what it means. I mean, it creates a couple of issues for people who have tattoos and come here mm. uh, basically originally it was f- thought it was the belief was that if you had a tattoo maybe you were part of the yakuza that's exactly so, right a, a slight issue a yakuza is the japanese mafia in essence basically and, yeah. and the problem with that is you kind of get restricted from going to certain places because people used to think that you were dangerous. Now, mm. I can't say that that's completely gone, but I do feel like I see a lot more younger people, specifically Japanese people, who have mm. tattoos. And it I think that's becoming. more of a cultural change. Yeah. yeah, it is becoming more popular. I'm seeing more and more people with tattoos these days, especially younger ones. Um, but, you know, I am not allowed to go in swimming pools. I'm not allowed to go in onsens or sorry hot springs or uh spas or things like that i'm just not allowed um for the most part some some areas do let westerners with tattoos in there's but a few, it's case yeah. by case but yeah. my wife she's third generation japanese and she is covered in tattoos so we can't no her full back is like uh, a king kakuji temple and you know wow that's it, it looks cool as it looks cool but, you know, that creates boundaries for her. She looks Japanese and she's got tattoos and it causes problems um, because of the stigma uh, that exists around tattoos in Japan. And it is changing. But one thing about Japanese culture is it takes a long time to change anything. Nothing changes quickly here. And it's going to take another generation or so until it's actually a bit normal, a bit more normalized. But... Mm-hmm. I don't know. Like, I I'm not that keen on you know public nudity anyway, mate. I'm British. Like, I'm not that bothered about going in the onsen. You know, <laughs> like sure. it's not really my thing. The, I was wondering what the tangent was here. I was like, what's what's going on? Yes. Uh, but then obviously the link is the uh, you suddenly started talking about public nudity. Yeah, if you like, go to the onsen, you're you are in your birthday suit basically yeah, for the whole time. One. Yeah, in the buff. We could also in say. The, the <laughs> um, yeah. But yeah, like I, I've been to one once, and I'm like, yeah, all these old Japanese grandpas having a good old stare, and that like, uh, you're all right, so, uh, <laughs> so not too bothered about that. The swimming pool thing kind of sucks. I'd like to be able to go to a swimming pool, but it's not to be. And you know, that's I can't come to Japan and be like, your culture doesn't work for me. You know, like mm-hmm. that's your your culture, like. It definitely I, shouldn't, and some people do, and I think they they end up having a very uh, difficult time here because they cannot adapt. It's it's really adaptation what we're talking about, it. and it shouldn't be that um, the whole of Japan Accommodates adapts me. to one no. person's culture. You know, mm. obviously in but the thing is, I think the thing if there are any Japanese listeners listening in the thing we have to remember that is in the west we generally accommodate to everybody so i think yeah. it, uh, when i say in the west i mean the uk and the usa and i think generally i say generally i can't say everyone of course mm. but i think that we're it's so multicultural so many people visit both countries or live in and often we're second third generation people from different co- who have different ancestries or from different cultures that are living in the country we have such a it's really a melting pot 
oh, for, for different sure. cultures, isn't it? Yeah. And uh, Japan hasn't had that exposure as of yet it's, in the same le- to the same level at all, you know. Mm. So, yeah, it's, it's very it's homogenous, a right? As um, honest word, yeah, yeah, homogenous. I think I heard somewhere you know Japan is like ninety eight percent Japanese people or something yeah. like. I think um, Brazilian. I mean, you said about your partner. Your Brazilian is one of the high. It's yeah. not the highest. I think it's probably it's one the of the second, highest. Yeah, um, behind China, maybe. Yeah, so there's, yeah. especially in Japan, there's like communities of Brazilians that kind of, Can't spell uh, you know, like in Shiga, we've got a community of Brazilians. Nagoya is very big with Brazilian people. Even like you're in Chiba is quite a lot of Brazilians um, kicking oh, around. Really? One of those things that like when you're an island country, right? And you have been so closed off to the world for so many years, like Japan has. It's only in recent history that it's open to other countries so much. In the last and, 150 years, yeah. Yeah, so it's a case of like, it takes it Sounds time. like a long time, but it is not a long time, especially as during that process they were forced mm. to listen to the outsiders and then obviously war issues happen. And, mm. and you know, there's there must be almost a pushback at different times throughout the history. For sure. So, For sure. you know. Mm. And, but I think, like you, like we said, it is changing. It is kind of take it takes a bit of time here things don't change that quickly but you know it is changing and westerners we do get a bit of a i mean for for one of a better word the gaijin pass um you know like we can get away with doing things because we're foreign that as japanese people couldn't do uh, because it's not socially acceptable or whatever um so there is an element of that as well i think but overall i've not had any huge problems and my wife because she's got a lot of tattoos of cats, right? Especially on her arm. She's got like a big cat tattoo and stuff. And mm. when she goes like the doctors or something, they love it. They're like, oh my God, that's so cute. What is it? Like, why do you have this? And it's more of a, an interest these days than like, a, you know, fear, I guess. Yeah. So I think things are changing, but it is, you know, a little slow. It's an adjustment. Yeah, yeah for sure. But yeah, and then back so, to where you were talking about yeah. a minute ago. Yeah, sorry. What's sorry, sorry. what's the worst tattoo you've ever seen? Like, because there's a, there's a world out there, and lots of people get really bad tattoos. Um, and I want to know your experience. Like, what's the worst tattoo you've ever? It's seen? It's really interesting question. Do you know what? Because I've never been that invested in the in that kind of tattoo culture, shall we say? Mm-hmm. I as as much as I love seeing a good piece of tattoo, a good piece of tattoo, a good guess, tattoo. Yeah. Um, I, I I don't really hit, spend too long looking at mm. the bad ones or from memory, but I can tell you some iconic ones I've seen. Yeah. So I've seen some very interesting, especially front or back tattoos. Like mm. a, I've seen a phoenix, which was incredible. I've seen like, I can't remember, but it was a movie scene on someone's chest and it was like a picture. It looked really amazing. Mm. And there, But some sentimental ones as well. So I know a guy... Well, I don't know him, but I know of a guy or I met a few times a guy who had been, he was a war veteran, basically, and he has tattoos, like three tear marks for mm. people close to him that passed away during the, mm. where, where he was battling. So, like, there's been some epic ones. But mm. in terms of, like, the classic is obviously the one that everyone thinks about. It's, like, the heart and the mum. And, yeah. and I always think that like super. Or, like, an anchor or something, yeah, you know. Like, a, yeah, like Popeye. I think yeah. it's very, very, <laughs> like... Um, cliche how can I, cliche yeah nice word yeah uh, cliche. so yeah you know the heart with m- usually spell m-a-m ma'am oh. ma'am oh, it's american <laughs> isn't it? yeah. that's why that's why guys uh, or you know like an anchor or something yeah like popeye um mm. they're, they're, they're how about definitely. you um, what have you seen there's there's a few that come to mind i remember on twitter a few years ago there's a picture uh, that somebody that wanted to get like uh jesus christ tattooed on their arm and it looks like a monkey in a, oh, no, wow. like you know those coats we'd have got like the big fluffy hood. And it looks like a monkey. It's so funny. It's so bad. And like we used to call that a Parker. Yeah, like a Parker. Yeah, exactly, exactly. A Parker um, jacket. So yeah, it just looks awful. And it's one of those things. It's like, did you upset the tattoo artist? Like, how has that been allowed to happen? Um, and yeah, it's just one of those things. But. The the worst best tattoo that I remember the seeing. The worst best. So that means yeah. that it's so bad it's good, yeah. Exactly. Um there was a guy called John in England and he played in a band called Pickled Dick. 
Um, oh yeah, I know pickled. I know yeah, of the. He bombs, looks like sideshow Bob, right? Anyway, and mm. he he had a terrible tattoo on his leg to do with cricket, um, and he went to on do that. With- the sport. Yes, the sport cricket. And he went on to that British TV show that like tattoo fixers. Yeah. It was like a reality show where they got people with terrible tattoos and tried to Must make it. Must be on good. YouTube by now. Yeah, yeah sure. Yeah, so that, that tattoo was terrible. Uh, <laughs> it was awful. But yeah, uh, even the artists were like, I don't know if we can fix this, mate. <laughs> <laughs> so that was cool. Sure. Um, but yeah, each to their own. You know, not everything has to be a work of art. Exactly. Everyone's got their own taste. And, and and the thing is, sometimes, like I said, some of the ones that we don't understand are the most sentimental to another person. Um, I will tell you, the ones I never understood were the ones where someone just got with a girl uh, oh. or, or a girl got with a guy um, in a relationship. That means to get with someone. Mm. I can't, it's kind of an interesting phrase, that one. But yeah, mm. um, basically with that, they tattooed the name of the person within a week or two. And for me, that is crazy. Disaster. That's yeah. cringe, that. That is that, cringe. That is cringe, that's right, yeah. That's like, crazy. And then inevitably Sorry if you've they done get... that, guys. Sorry no. if any of you've done that. Well, but, yeah. I'm not. Like, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, because inevitably they're the people that break up super easily, right? It's always yeah. that kind of person. <laughs> like, what are you doing, friend? Um so yeah i hate that as well like that that is terrible um but you know it may be it may be sentimental to them who knows but Stu, my next question for you then uh, to kind of start bringing us home is please if, if you could get a tattoo what would you like <laughs> it's so difficult because british feel... bull tasmanian devil that's that's I... one you should get I, I would, if no one knows, a Tasmania Devil was an old 90s cartoon, which was epic. Yeah, and for some reason, people got it tattooed on their arm with the word Taz. Yeah, they were really, really, really popular, weren't it, that tattoo? Uh, for no, some reason. I, I don't know. I would definitely be someone who'd, I'm all in or not in this <laughs> case, I think. And it would be like a, it would be someone that only made me, it would definitely be a person. Mm. And it would probably be a iconic uh comedy figure through time i can't like maybe it would be like the scene of something out of black adder i can imagine ah, doing, yeah, you know yeah, yeah. like uh you know something you, really yeah. like special to you right it's, it's kind of like my rick mail tattoo it's like it's yeah, really special to me yeah it um, would be like um i don't know i quite like um what's his name stephen fry in black adder i yeah. always thought he was good in that Melchant, also, right yeah yeah or even it would be like a black adder telling off uh, Baldrick, Baldrick or something yeah. like this, yeah. So well, it would be something stupid like that, or it would be exceptionally sentimental, like my kids' names or something. It would uh, just, okay. it'd be something ridiculous or something really basic for me. How about yeah. if you could have one more, which I'm sure you will get at some point? Yeah, what would at you some like point to have? I will. Um, my name. Yeah, it's Stu's name directly <laughs> across the heart. Stu, <laughs> Stu, Stu Sensei. Yeah. Uh, obviously, at first, at Stu Sensei. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it has to be the Instagram handle. At stu.sensei.english, <laughs> just in case you didn't know. Yeah, yeah good idea. And that sly plug. I oh, that, no, what you should definitely do is get a QR code of the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> what's a tattoo be like oh what's your podcast be like hang on friend and just no turn worries, around no I, just got, I just got it here look what's it just... like fuck it minority report or something <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh Amazing. mate um in realistically um i'm quite kind of a fan of getting like silly tattoos that mean something if you know yeah. um like the Rick Mail thing, I, yeah. I popped for. I popped for <laughs> popped. that. Yeah, that's a bit of wrestling terminology, by the way. Yeah. Um, but, for example, something that like me and a close friend like a lot, maybe we get something, a small tattoo together that kind of represents that thing that we both joined because of this thing, right? Sure. Um, for, for example, my wife and a group of friends all in Brazil all got a similar tattoo on their wrist, and it's like a symbol that they all know. Oh, uh, One Piece. Okay, I guess so, yeah, like, kind of that. Um, but there's a few things that I'd like to get that represent things like that. But they're all really stupid if you don't know what it is. Like, me and my wife run about getting matching takoyaki tattoos because we grew up in... We, we met in Osaka, and that's a famous food from Osaka, and the first thing we ate together was takoyaki, right? So that kind of, like, it means something to us, but to everyone else it's yeah. going to look really stupid. 
So I probably get it. I get it. something like that. Um, that is a bit, that's why I said a sentimental thing. It'd be something mm, like that for me. Mm. But it's sentimental in a way that's not serious. You know, it's, mm. it's, it's a picture of a fried octopus ball. It's not that. It's not that deep, you know. <laughs> just two, just two. Yeah. yeah, so, you know, something like that, probably. Um, yeah. Or when I go back to England, I, one of my best friends is a tattoo artist, and he'll be like, oh, I really want to draw this on someone. Let me draw it on you. But like, oh, all right, then, whatever. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, let's see what happens with that. But that kind of brings us towards the end of the podcast. I enjoyed that 100%. little chat. It was good. Um, just a bit of stuff to get out of the way. If you housekeeping, want you have bit, some housekeeping. A bit of yeah. housekeeping. Uh, you know, if you're interested in this podcast, please like, uh, leave a rating wherever you're listening to this. If you're watching on YouTube, let us know what you thought about tattoos in the comments below. Please. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, don't forget to follow us, you know, social media, all that stuff. It really helps us out. And if you want to get even more from us, in the link in the description and the show notes, you can get a free downloadable PDF with all the important vocabulary from this episode. Download it, keep it, make your own textbook, whatever. <laughs> It'll help you understand these podcasts even more. And yeah, just basically, thanks a lot for listening. Stu, have you got anything you want to say to the people? No, just come back next time, yeah? We're going to be doing more of these sessions, and I think they're valuable for you, so definitely come. The, t the sensei said so, so you should definitely do it. The senseis said so, so you <laughs> should definitely right. do it. That's definitely. why this makes sensei. There we go. Wow, you're such a professional. Uh, but good stuff. Well, thank you very much, everyone, for listening, and we'll see you next time. See you later. Ciao, ciao.